everybody, this is Dream, and today we have a six-game Major League Baseball slate. It's a pretty interesting slate, though it is a little bit more annoying than some of the slates we've had. Um, pitching is pretty rough today, but overall, we do have some good scoring teams here, so we should have a decent high-scoring slate on our hands. Uh, before I get started, can you guys smash that like and subscribe button? It really helps the channel. Uh, we don't really have too much of a weather risk, though there is some rain around. It seems like all the games should be clear for the most part. So uh, there could be some rain in a couple of the games, but shouldn't really affect play. Doesn't look like, at least at this point. Um, let's go ahead and get into our pitchers here. We're going to start with Otani. So we have an Otani slate here. Obviously, you know, he can score uh, high amounts of fantasy points with his K rate. Uh, he also has tendency to give up a couple earned runs, and in this situation is kind of a situation where I think he will. Uh, though I do think he's going to score over 28 or so fantasy points and make him a decent play. I think he is a little bit riskier today than most games, though he is facing a Seattle team that's been inconsistent. Uh, but I do think he has some potential to have a big game just the same. Uh, I do like him as a good play, but he is fairly expensive, and of course he's the most expensive option on the slate. Uh, Urias for the Dodgers is the second most expensive guy on the slate, but he's facing Oakland. Uh, he does have a bigger range than most other pitchers on the slate, as his stealing is close to 30 fantasy points, and his floor is under negative 10, uh, which is pretty extreme uh, for a pitcher. He's hit over 20 fantasy points seven times this season, and he's been under 10 fantasy points seven times this season, including a bunch of negative scores um, and 15 starts. Literally a boomer bust. Today he plays Oakland, which is an advantage, but he has had some terrible games versus bad teams this season, like Kansas City. So he's high risk, high reward, but he is capable today. Um, then we're going to look at Wu uh, for Seattle. Now he's facing the Angels, and he does look like a risky contrarian option today. But he has scored over 17 fantasy points in 6 of his 10 starts, and he's had 7 strikeouts 5 times. He's only had 1 win, though, which is, which is keeping his floor lower than, it, than I'd like. But he is uh, a potential has some good potential today against the Angels, uh, but he does have some risk uh, associated as well. I'm also going to mention Mitch Keller, who has some upside today in a tougher matchup here against Milwaukee, as Milwaukee has been hitting the ball decently well. I do think that they have some good batters today as well. Uh, J.P. Sears is also in play for the Oakland, which is somewhat surprising. He's about the only guy in Oakland that has. Any upside whatsoever. However, he faces an extremely tough matchup here against the Dodgers, which is very high risk, high reward. I mean, that's just insane risk, to be honest. Uh, Adrian Hauser from Milwaukee is the cheapest pitcher available. He does have the upside to score 18 to 20 fantasy points, but he doesn't get there very much. But I did want to mention him simply because he is capable, as he does have tendency to have good strikeout games. Uh, and then uh, Jameis Italian for the the Cubs. He is facing Cincinnati, and I do like Cincinnati today. Uh, but he is dirt cheap, and he has some potential as well, though it is high risk, high reward. Again, most like uh, the other guys I've mentioned. He only scored eight fantasy points the last time he faced Cincinnati this season. So, uh, and the K rate is inconsistent. So overall, I do think pitching is really rough today. Uh, my favorite stacks for batters are Milwaukee, Chicago Cubs, and Cincinnati Reds. Sorry, not Milwaukee, Minnesota, Chicago Cubs, and Cincinnati Reds. Uh, the Cubs have been absolutely tearing uh, the ball up uh, the last couple games against uh, the Reds, so I do think he they have some really good upside today. Let's get into our catchers here. We're going to start with uh, Will Smith, who has been in a bit of a slump, but he does have home run upside, and he managed a 13 fantasy point game yesterday. Oakland and the Dodgers should have a decent game today as well, so I do like uh, the Dodgers in this one, um, and I think he's a viable option, though he's fairly expensive for the fact that he's been a little bit inconsistent lately. Cal Raleigh is an interesting play because he's hit the ball extremely well with five home runs over the last 10 games, though he is facing Otani. Uh, he has some potential here, as the metrics are very good, but it's a high-risk, high-reward situation. He's cheap enough that he's viable, especially if you go with a contrarian stack where you go against Otani, uh, but, you know, that could definitely pay off today for Seattle, but it is risky, but he is one of the better options on Seattle, as he's hitting the ball very well lately, seeing it and everything. So uh, then we'll look at M William Contreras for Milwaukee. I really do like him a lot today. Uh, he has good metrics here. He's hitting the ball pretty solidly. He hasn't had a ton of home runs, but he does have good hitting potential and upside. And if he can steal a home run as well, that would even solidify him even better. So he's a little bit expensive here. Uh, and then Ryan Jeffers uh, for Minnesota is also in play. 
Uh, he has hit the ball extremely well recently with a 400 batting average over the last 10 games. He does have some low-end home run potential today, too, but he doesn't even need it necessarily since he's hitting the ball so well as of late. And since and Minnesota has a, a great matchup here, so I think he's a great option on the slate. And he's nice and cheap as well. Uh, moving to first baseman, we'll start with Cody Bellinger, who's hit the ball pretty solid recently. He's had three home runs in the last 10 games and he even has had a couple stolen bases which is somewhat surprising uh, but he has good potential here for a home run and I do like his upside in this game I think the the Cubs are going to be a very highly owned team today uh, Freddie Freeman is a good contrarian option off of him as he has hit almost 500 over the last 10 games and he's doing it with lots of different things uh, he's not even getting a ton of home runs he's just scoring the ball uh, scoring fantasy points in lots of different ways, though home runs do help. You know, he's even managed to get some stolen bases lately, so that's interesting as well. And then Carlos uh, Santana for, uh, oopsie, Carlos Santana for Milwaukee is kind of a value play today. There's not a ton of value plays at first base today, but uh, he's hit the ball pretty well with four home runs over the last ten games. He does have some good upside in this matchup as well, so I do think he's a viable option if you go with a Milwaukee stack. Uh, moving to the second base here, we're going to start with uh, Nico Horner uh, for the Cubs, who is a core play to me. Uh, though he is a little bit expensive, uh, slightly more expensive than I like, he does draw good metrics at this, in this game. He's got home run upside, and I like his potential. Um, he has been a little bit inconsistent, and his price is a little high, but I do think he's a viable option on this particular slate. Mookie Betts can play here at War Outfield today. He's hit the ball very inconsistent recently, but he is hitting for average right now, and I do like his home run potential in this matchup, uh, though it's not as good as some of the last couple games that he's had here against the uh, Oakland A's. Um, then we'll look at Morel for the Cubs. Now, he has hit the ball uh, very well with a 350 batting average. He's managed to score fantasy points in ways, in different ways, uh, and he's you know, getting at least seven in most games, and he's had a bunch of games over 10 fantasy points lately, so I do like his upside. He's also have some nice home run potential as well. He's a great play, though. He's very expensive today for what he's been doing. Uh, as a result, uh, Ahmad Rosario is also in play. He's a nice, uh, cheap option. He actually hit a home run yesterday as a core play for the yesterday's slate, and he's drawing another situation where he looks pretty good. Doesn't look quite as Good as yesterday, but he still looks pretty good. I don't expect a home run, but he's hitting the ball decently well, and I do like his upside here. He seems like he's really enjoying his time with the Dodgers now. And then Jose Altuve is also in play for Houston. He's a high expensive player. Uh, he's not been super flashy lately, but he has good home run potential, and I do like his upside and his ability to score fantasy points in lots of different ways. Uh, moving to third base here, we're going to look at Ella De La Cruz. Now, he's been... Very inconsistent lately, which is somewhat annoying. He has some runs or bust a lot of times. He's also striking out more than he should, uh, but uh, he does have good potential. He also has stolen base upside, though he hasn't. He's only had one stolen base in the last 10 games. He's striking out way too much, which is a problem, especially at this price range. Uh, then we'll look at Jameer Candelario. Now, I do actually like him, and I thought about making him a core play as he's hit the ball extremely well. He's not a huge home run threat necessarily but he does draw good home run metrics today uh he has hit the ball very well though in this series since he's been traded i do like his potential here and he's hitting the ball uh just too good to ignore uh he seems like he's really enjoying his new team as well so i think he's a great play and he's very close to being a core play for me uh willie castro is in the core play uh he has been getting a lot of stolen bases lately which is really up to his potential uh he hasn't started a couple games but um if he does draw the start today, he's going to be somebody that's dirt cheap and really gives you a lot of upside as he does have that stolen base metric that gives him a boost. He's not a huge home run threat, but he's hitting the ball, you know, pretty good for average and has some good potential here. Uh, Kyle Farmer uh, and Solano are both in play as well for Minnesota. Um, and I'm just mentioning both of them because um, the... I'm not sure if both of them will play today, but one of them will probably, and they both kind of have similar situations where they don't play every day, uh, but they do draw some good metrics for this game, and uh, so I, I do like Farmer better than Solano, but I do think that they both have some upside on this particular slate. Um, and then Alex Bregman, finally, uh, for Houston. Houston's kind of a good sneaky stack today, though they are pretty expensive, so they are hard to stack today. Uh, but uh, Bregman has hit the ball fairly well. He's a better player on FanDuel where he is nice and cheap. Uh, but here on DraftKings, he still has some upside with home run potential. 
Um, and then moving in the shortstop, Ella De La Cruz can play it short as well. But uh, Carlos Correa is a great option today for the Twins, though he is fairly expensive and his batting average isn't great. He does tend to be kind of a home runner best kind of guy lately, but he does draw good contact most of the time. Uh, then we'll look at J.P. Crawford uh, for uh, Seattle, who is a nice cheap option. Now he has... A tough matchup here against Otani, but he has hit the ball well against the Angels this season. He does draw decent metrics here, but he's high risk, high reward. Uh, but if he can get around to the uh, back, you know, to the, uh, uh, the sorry, the relief pitching for the Angels today, then he will definitely have some utility from that perspective. Uh, then we'll look at Dansby Swanson for the Cubs. Now he's a little bit overpriced, but he's hitting the ball really well on a Cubs stack. He's definitely capable as he's. Uh, when he gets going, he tends to be a lot of fun to roster as a result of his potential. He's actually had six home runs in the last 10 games, which is wild, since he had 10 home runs in, in the in the 84 games prior to that. So, But he's on a, he's on fire right now, just like the Cubs, so he's definitely in play. Ahmad Rosario can also play here in the uh, shortstop position, which is nice because you can kind of mix and match him if you want as well, and he's nice and cheap. Uh, maybe the outfielders, we'll look at Jordan Alvarez first. Uh, he has some really good metrics for this game. He's hitting the ball really well lately with a 353 average over the last 10 games. He finally seems like he's coming into his own for the season, so uh, he does fully draw his home run potential, which he's had a couple in the last five games as well. Uh, I also like Kyle Tucker, but he hasn't been quite as good recently. Uh, he's only hitting 278, and he's only had one home run in the last 10 games. We know he's capable of good fantasy point games, so even without the home runs, so he's not quite hitting the metrics that we need, or sorry, the levels that we need with his price range, but he's still in play. Mookie Betts can also play out here in outfield. Uh, Julio Rodriguez is also in play, though he does have a tough matchup against Otani. He has hit the ball pretty well recently, which is above average for him uh, this season. He also has some stolen base potential too, so if he can get on base with a walk or something, that can definitely give him some ability. For the expensive options, you could also consider Christian Yelich, Brian Buxton, and Aaron Judge today. Move, moving on to the value plays in the outfield, we'll start with uh, Reynolds for Pittsburgh. As he draws some good metrics in this game, he's also hit the ball really well with a 318 average over the last 10 games. I do like his upside, and he does have some good utility here, uh, though I do like, uh, do think that uh, Pittsburgh is a little bit risky today. Uh, Sawinski is also in play, though he has not hit the ball well lately. He does have some boomer bust home run potential. He is striking out a little bit too much, though. Ian Hop is a great option today, and I do think he's a core play. He has hit the ball extremely well lately. He's really improving his get season. Playing a lot more like now that I thought he was going to play all season long. He's had four home runs the last 10 games, and he has uh, a lot of really good fantasy point games. He's doing lots of different things, and he's nice and cheap, which gives him a, a lot of utility here. Uh, Jake Fraley uh, for the Cubs, or sorry, for the Reds is also in play, uh, though he does feel a little bit risky today. He does have some home run metrics for this game, so I do think he's viable here. He's had some pretty good games lately, and he's not striking out too much uh, for his potential for his potential and price. Uh, and then Sia Suzuki is in play for the Cubs. Uh, he has not hit the ball very well, but he does have some low end upside today as the Cubs are playing extremely well. And he's managed to score some decent fantasy points a couple of, a couple of times recently. He's nice and cheap though, so that gives you some upside, but he doesn't have the best batting average and he's a little bit risky as a Hail Mary option. Uh, you can also put Willie Castro out here in the outfield, which is a nice bonus. And then uh, and then Mike Talkman for the Cubs. If he draws a start today, he has hit the ball extremely well recently with two home runs in the last 10 with a 360 average. Uh, he's having some nice games here. He doesn't start every game, so that is a concern. But uh, when he does start, he's somebody that's definitely worth taking a look at. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see if he does play today. But uh, if he does, then he's definitely in play. However, he didn't even start yesterday, and then he ended up with a... 18 fantasy point games so uh, i'm not going to use him if he doesn't start but he's definitely in play if he does thank you guys uh for that let's go ahead and get into the uh fanduel uh plays uh, my top three pitchers for fanduel are otani urias and Wu. um in that order i do think that urias and Wu are cheap enough that they have some viability here on fanduel if you don't want to pay up for otani which is definitely understandable on a slate like this as for the catchers and the first baseman cal raleigh looks like a really good option though he is facing otani so that is high risk 
Um, obviously, two expensive plays in Cody Bellinger and Freddie Freeman, who are playing very well lately. Uh, Will Smith is a little bit cheaper, which gives him some upside. And then Ryan Jeffers is a nice uh, value play in the outfield, uh, or in the catcher to first base position guy there. So maybe in the second base, uh, Mookie Betts and Chris Morell are both in play here. Uh, though they do, they are very expensive and somewhat difficult to roster as a result. Nico Horner is priced pretty fairly and has really good metrics here, and I do think he's a great option on the slate, and he's nice and cheap here on FanDuel, whereas Jose Altuve is a little bit expensive, but he does draw some good metrics here. And then Farmer and Solano from Minnesota both have some utility here, though Farmer is better than Solano. They both have some interesting upside on this particular slate. Maybe at third base, uh, we have uh, Chris Morel and Ella De La Cruz, a little bit overpriced for this game these games, but they do have some potential here. Jamie Calorando for the Cubs is nice and cheap and really rosterable today. Same goes for Ox. Bregman, who's a little bit underpriced on FanDuel most of the time, and this is a great situation for him. Willie Castro can also play here at third base, and he's nice and cheap here on this, and a core play for me on DraftKings and FanDuel today. He can also play in the outfield, so you don't have to regulate him. I do think if you, uh, you know, depending on how you build your lineups, a good way to put utility players is pulling from the third base uh, roster as well. Maybe in the shortstop, uh, Mookie Betts is very expensive, but he definitely draws the upside. Uh, Carlos Correa is a little bit underpriced, and so I do like his potential, though he has been inconsistent this season. Nico Horner can also play here at shortstop, which is nice because you can mix and match him with different options at second base. And then uh, J.P. Crawford is a good value play as well. Danzy Swanson is a little bit underpriced, and so is Ahmad Rosario, as they all have some nice upside. Another position you could pull that utility player from and uh, some of these guys have multiple position up, upside as well. Maybe in the outfielders, uh, Jordan Alvarez, Kyle Tucker for Houston, both in play, though they are both a little expensive and hard to roster as a result. Same goes for Mookie Betts, who's very expensive. But if you don't go with Otani, then he's definitely somebody that you can consider in a lot of different positions. Uh, Christian Yelich uh, is in play today. He's a little bit pricey, but he has some nice upside in this matchup. Uh, Byron Buxton is underpriced here on FanDuel, though he has been battling injuries, so you do want to make sure he draws a start today, but he's nice and cheap, and so he definitely has some viability. Jack Sawinski has been inconsistent this season, but he's nice and cheap as well, and he draws some good metrics and upside. Ian Hopp is underpriced on FanDuel and draws good metrics for the price. I do like him as a good home run play as well. Uh, C.S. Suzuki is very underpriced, uh, though he has been inconsistent this season, so he's high risk, high reward. Uh, Mike Talkman is in play as well for the Cubs if he draws a start. And then Jake Fraley is a little bit pricey, but he definitely draws home run potential today. And Willie Castro is underpriced and is available at outfield as well as a great value option and a core play for me. So with that said, guys, thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below. And have a nice day, guys.